What's up everybody and today we're doing a new edition of the Tool Duel. I want to know which tool you think wins out of these tools shown in the video. We're looking at power, we're looking at speed, we're looking at price, we're looking at everything, but it's up to you to decide which one wins. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think. Now with that said, let's take a look at the tools that are competing against each other today in today's Tool Duel. We got the Makita 36 volt rear handle saw going up against the all new Milwaukee 18 volt fuel rear handle saw. Neither one of these saws are actual true worm drives, but they are both beastly. Now we just had a tool duel between the Milwaukee M18 versus the DeWalt 60 volt flex bolt. I think the DeWalt actually won against that comparing the votes, but today we're putting it up against the Makita. Go check that video out after you're done watching this one. I'll put a card at the end of this video. Now I'm going to give you all the specs on both of these. I'm going to give you the price range on both of these. I'm going to talk to you about what I like better about each saw. And I'm also going to talk about what I hate about each one of these saws. We're also going to slice through some treated 4x4. But before we start, don't forget to smoosh that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any up coming tool duels. Let's talk about the Makita first. $199 for this saw, the tool only. What I like about this, check out this awesome battery indicator light right here. You have to use two batteries. This is the 18 volt times two, 36 volts all together. Now, what I really like about this saw, as soon as I pick this thing up, I don't know why, it just feels like a Ferrari in the hands. It is just so comfortable, so smooth, so ergonomically correct. I really have to give Makita credit for this. All of the metal on this, including the guarding, is also magnesium. Now, for RPM, you're looking at 5,100 no load, up to 550A cross cuts per charge with two 5AH batteries. You cannot run this saw off of one battery. You have to have two. Another thing I really like is the positive stops. I mentioned this on the DeWalt. I really like the positive stop aspect. Even though this is not bothering a lot of other people, I like it. As far as it goes with the blade change, I really like the blade lock right here. The lever you just push down, it stands out. It's prominent, easy to do. And again, the feel in this thing, Ferrari, vroom, 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 vroom. This thing is freaking awesome when it comes to ergonomics. And you got the rafter hook right there. Just a little side note, you do have a lanyard attachment on the back handle. Now you do have up to a 53 degree bevel capacity, stops positive at the 22 and a half, the 45 degree and the 53 degree mark. You do have a pretty large two and nine sixteenth inch cutting capacity at 90 degrees. The weight is 12.4 pounds and it comes in at 17 and a half inches long. Now before we start the slicing and the dicing, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's move it on to the Milwaukee IA. All right, the Milwaukee, $70 more. You're looking at $269 for this saw. The guarding, you are looking at aluminum. Now, as far as it goes with the RPM, you're looking at $5,800. So, $700 more than the Makita. You got 570 cuts per charge. The length on this, you are looking at 18.9 inches. Also, very comfortable, very smooth. And I will tell you, the rafter hook is also very nice. The line of sight on this, which I'll show you later, it's probably the best out there. Now we are using one high output 12.0 battery. It goes right on the top instead of the side like the Makita. Now where the Makita batteries go on the bottom left, this one here comes up out of the top and it is a little bit higher than I'm used to. But another plus on this is you get a freaking wrench, an onboard storage for your wrench on the Milwaukee where the Makita, eh, eh. but back in the Makita's corner, the Milwaukee, even though people don't care about this, doesn't have the positive stops. That's not even what's irritating. On every other rear handle saw that I have, or every saw that I have, there is a stop right next to the bevel lever. This one does not, and it will keep spinning until it comes completely loose. Not happy with that. Though I will tell you, the Milwaukee and the Makita both bevel extremely smooth. Very well done to both of them. Now the maximum cut per depth at 90 degrees, you're looking at two and a half inches. It also bevels from zero to 53 degrees. And going back into the Milwaukee corner, it is over two pounds lighter at only 10 pounds. 
Now that we got the specs out of the way, we need to slice it and dice it. We're using the exact same blades for both saws. This is the Diablo metal and wood blade. I'll put a link in the description below for both of the saws and the blades, but let's do the electronic brake test. And that was real nice luck. Let's try the Milwaukee. They both start up very quickly, stop very quickly, but noise wise, the Milwaukee is definitely higher pitched and higher dB level than the Makita. Alright, let's do a plunge test into the treated 4x4 Makita first, then we will go on to the Milwaukee and then we're just going to slice it and we're going to dice it right down the treated 4x4. All right, no issue going down through. Now let's just go straight down the board. All right, just to show you there, no issue but the dust extraction port is on the bottom of the saw so if you are cutting through plywood or something like this well it will shoot sawdust out the side as well let's keep going okay again no issue going down a little bit of bogging and you can see that dust is starting to build up on the side so you will make a mess on your project or the piece of plywood or whatever you are cutting if you were using that discharge now let's try the Milwaukee and it has a side discharge and I will point one thing out here in a bit that somebody brought up to me in the last tool duel so let's check out the plunge that was also real nice like and just like we did with the Makita let's just run her down the board All right, now let me point something out. Even though that screamed down that 4x4, I want to point this out to you. Notice that the sawdust was also coming out around the saw blade. It was coming out through the chute, but watch this pretty closely. Somebody actually pointed this out on the last tool duel. The dust chute on the Milwaukee is actually clogged from the sawdust. Check that out. So it's still piling up around. Now I didn't have any issues with the 2x4s or cross cuts, but when doing cuts like this on the treated 4x4, which I don't think you're going to be doing, um, it clogs up around the top and it stops from coming out the dust chute. You can see it right there. So yeah, I didn't even notice that on the first tool duel and uh, somebody pointed that out. So, all right, now we're gonna do some cross cuts. Let's see how it works out with the Makita first.
All right, no issue there. And if you are a framer, you know, this is what you're going to use that saw a lot for. I really like how that dust blows out the bottom. Let's just go across the top. Now, even though these both have respectable amounts of power and you will have no issues with the Makita, I will point out that the Milwaukee blows this thing away when it comes to the power of these saws. It just is what it is. Now, some of you will be saying, well, you use two 5AH batteries instead of two 6AH batteries. Well, guess what? It's a 36 volt and the Milwaukee is an 18 volt. So it is what it is. All right, let's do it with the Milwaukee. Didn't have any problems with the dust chute this time because we were doing the cross cuts, but you know that issue is still there. Let's make a couple more here. All right, let's show two more things here. On the Milwaukee, you have the LED light that is actually pretty bright. You do not have that on the Makita. And here is the Milwaukee after running it. You still got four bars on the Makita, two bars on each battery. In fairness though, the Makita batteries only take about 45 minutes to charge where the Milwaukee 12AH battery takes over an hour. Now let's talk about line of sight. As far as it goes with the Makita, probably the best out there. That guard is pretty thin and you just got a really, really nice view where it comes to the Makita. That guard is a little bit more pronounced. It stands out a little bit more and a little bit harder to see while you're cutting. Let me get to the two things on each saw that I absolutely hate. No onboard storage for the wrench on the Makita, really. It drives me insane that I have to grab my DeWalt wrench or find an Allen wrench just to loosen this thing up. Another thing I will probably take heat on for the Makita is the 36 volt. Yeah, I get you wanna be more powerful than 18 volt, but I just don't like the two battery concept. How many batteries do I need to run three tools? Do I really need to take two batteries out of my saw and then transport that into my <laughs> sander, my drywall sander? I don't wanna do that. Enough already with the two batteries, Makita. The two things that I hate about the Milwaukee. Number one, why did they not put a stop for that bevel release lever to stop spinning? I don't even care about the positive stops all that much, even though it irks me a little bit. You know, why is it that that bevel handle keeps on spinning? It drives me crazy. And number two is, well, the dust extraction. I don't even hate that that much. I'll be honest with you, I only had trouble maybe once or twice with that, and that's because I was going through a treated four by four. The Makita did a lot better when it came to that. It didn't clog at all where the Milwaukee did, but that's something that, you know, it irked me. Now, even though there are a couple things that I found to be pretty negative on both of these saws, at the end of the day, they are still great freaking saws. The Milwaukee is just a blistering monster that is comfortable. It's light for this size, has an awesome, awesome line of sight on it, ergonomically correct. It is just a freaking powerhouse. And the Makita, it, it literally feels like a Ferrari for your hands. It is just an all around great saw. They are both extremely heavy duty and both very professional grade saws. But this is up to you. I want to know what do you like about these saws? What do you not like about these saws? Who wins the tool duel? Who comes out victorious? Who comes out number one between these two monsters? Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any videos. Don't forget to smash that freaking like button. Come say hi to us on the Instagram page at Tool Review Zone. And we'll be back with more videos soon.